Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Let's get into today's card. So I am starting with one of the pre-printed pieces, I guess you'd call them. This is one of the Susie Plantamira's Mother's Day printables. Um, I just showed these in the release and review video for Simon Says Stamps Sunny Days Ahead release. So these are printed onto the smooth side of Distress watercolor paper. She does all these designs. There's a whole bunch of packs available. All different like themes and styles and all that. But of course, I'm always partial to florals. <laughs> so I pulled out this one from the pack because I'm also... I There's something about poppies. I love poppies. And no, I always think red first. That's just what goes through my head. So I actually googled it and I was like, that's right, there's different colors of poppies. So I went with what is my current favorite right now. It's like peach peach and oranges and coral colors and to start off with I did just clean water on the background just more around the edges like over the greenery and around the edges and then I dropped in some color and I'm using just regular distress inks to do my watercolor I, it's been a minute since I've used my distress inks at all <laughs> still love them highly recommend them um they're just, they're great inks and the color, there's so many colors and I love them. I just haven't watercolored them with them in a really long time. I've been using, you know, watercolors and distress oxide inks, etc., etc. So I decided, I was like, you know what? I want to pull these out. I haven't used them in a while. So I'm working on my little water media mat from Waffle Flower and I just smushed all the inks into the little wells because they were sized for things like this, which just makes my life perfect. It also kind of helps prevent me from getting my elbow in them because I do that a lot. So anywho, <laughs> I kept the coloring technically simple. Like I did that little under coloring, you know, under painting with the lighter colors. And I dried it with my heat tool before I went on to anything else because I didn't want all the color, you know, to continually keep bleeding out. And then I call this simple watercoloring because I'm not really following any rhyme or reason. I'm also not really mixing any colors. The first uh, poppy I used ripe persimmon. And I'm just picking up the color with a wet paintbrush and then painting. And I just kind of kept going back and adding like deeper and deeper color. So more ink, less water. And then for the next poppy, I was using Abandoned Coral, which is another one. Oh, I just, it was just one of those things where it's like, oh, I love this color so much. And then, oh yeah, I love this color too. I'm like, that. I like all the colors. So anywho, I would dry everything before I went on to the next part, even though, um, these aren't heat embossed images. Like they are laser, they Simon Says Stamp laser prints them onto these panels. Um, and I've mentioned before, like when I stamp, a lot of times I like to heat emboss because that kind of prevents things from going everywhere. But it's funny when you color on these, because they're laser printed, I assume with laser printing, it sits more on top of the paper. Whereas like an ink jet or when you stamp, the ink penetrates into the paper. So, the reason why I'm even mentioning that is it creates the, the slightest bit of a barrier between the lines. I found that some areas that were still a little bit wet, they weren't kind of bleeding into each other. So I don't know. It was just a neat little thing. It's not a fail safe like the like heat embossing is, but it's just interesting. I kind of like how that all worked. So I just did all my painting of the flowers and I reused the, I did wild honey for the kind of yellowy sort of flower. And then I did more of the right persimmon and the abandoned coral. The greenery I'm using crushed olive and mowed lawn. And this is where I kind of go back and forth and mix the greens a little bit just to get a couple different shades of green. Um, kept the greenery really simple. I literally just applied the color with the paintbrush and left it. I didn't, you know, add shading or anything like that. I just left them. I thought they just worked just like that. For the flower centers, I started with hickory smoke because poppies do have that like dark like black center so I started with hickory smoke but it wasn't dark enough so I took a tiny little bat bit of black soot to kind of deepen it and I did do a little bit of mixing I kind of was mixing some of the green with the wild honey just to kind of get a brown shade rather than grab another um uh di distress ink cube so after everything was completely dry I did a little bit of splatter I splattered I think it was the right persimmon and then the wild honey just just a little bit can't, can't not add the splatter. And like I've been saying in my last few videos, I'm on the splatter train again. So everything is getting splattered always. It just, I can't not, I love the look of it. 
So let that all dry again, which didn't take very long. And then I want to add some shimmery splatter. So of course I pulled out my Ranger Perfect Pearl. So I had just put just some water on the, the mat and then picked up a bit of the Perfect Pearl powder with my paintbrush. And like with everything, you can do this with the Distress Inks as well. You can mix the Perfect Pearl powder, like after you smush the inks into whatever surface you're using to watercolor, you could add Perfect Pearl powder to that if you wanted and then water and you'll create your own like shimmery watercolor. You totally can do that. Um, I didn't, I just, I like adding it afterwards as a splatter. So I've got that nice shimmery effect. So after I had done all that and everything was dry, I die cut that with one of Simon's basic rectangle wafer dies. And then for my main sentiment, I had pulled out the outline mum wafer die that I showed in the release and review video. And I die cut the actual word from Simon's gold glitter paper. And the outline had been die cut from Simon's vellum. And then I ran this through my little Xyron three inch machine. So this puts, it's a sticker machine. So it puts adhesive across the entire back. This is one way to adhere vellum because vellum is finicky depending on the adhesive you use, like the adhesive will show, but if you coat the entire back with adhesive, it's not gonna show up. So it just is concealed. So I did this, you know, I coated with the adhesive. I ran my bone folder all around the edges before peeling off the backing. That kind of helps eliminate those sticky edges so that the, the backing paper picks it up. And I pressed it down and then I changed my mind. <laughs> So I was like, uh, I very carefully peeled this up. This is also why when I say like, you want things to be dry before you die cut them, et cetera, et cetera. If this background had been wet at all, when I peel was peeling this off, I probably would have torn, like I would have ruined the whole thing. So I very carefully peeled it back up and actually added a second layer of vellum that I die cut with the outline from the outline mum set. I die cut a second layer from vellum. So I stuck that to it. So now I have two layers of vellum. This is a Christina Warner trick that I always forget about. And then I just watched one of her more recent videos and she had, you know, doubled up on the vellum. And I was like, that's right. I really like the look of that. So that's what I did. So I ran it through my little Xyron again. So now I have two layers of vellum and then a layer of the Xyron adhesive on the back of it. So now I can stick that on. So this way it's still transparent. You can still see the color and the outlines and everything, but through it, but it just gives it that little extra bit of opaqueness. So it stands out just a little bit more. So after I'd done that for the remainder of the sentiments, I am using the reverse mom days, again, pre-printables. I realized after, like, as I started editing this card, I was like, I didn't do any stamping at all. And that feels weird because <laughs> I stamp on everything. But these were all pre-printables and die cuts. Totally made my card. So it's just a funny thing. So anywho, I chose sentiments that I wanted to use. So I'm just trimming them down with my little guillotine trimmer here. So I want a sentiment for the outside and I'm gonna add a sentiment to the inside, of course. So once I've got those trimmed, I'm going to adhere the one sentiment to my panel with just some craft tacky glue. I decided today would not be that's also like I didn't do any stamping and I didn't add anything with foam tape or dimensionals or anything like that, which is also not usually the norm because usually my cards end up being, you know, like an inch thick with all the dimension and everything that I add. But this one is a very mailable card. So that was just what was going through my head this time. So I backed this panel with some orange cardstock that I cut slightly larger. So it just gives it a nice little bit of a frame. And then I'm going to adhere this to a um, side folding A2 card base made from Simon's 120 pound white cardstock. So I'm going to adhere that with some craft tacky glue. And then I will adhere the Happy Mother's Day sentiment to the inside of the card. So once that's adhered, as always, you could leave it here, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more bling. So after I adhered the sentiment to the inside, I pulled out the soft sunrise sequin mix again, because like I said, I'm in like this, this orangey pinky peach mood lately. I just really like this combo. It's just, there's, it's so pretty. So these sequins just go perfectly with that. So I sprinkled some of the confetti and sequins from this pack onto the background. And I chose them specifically too, because they're very subtle. So it's not, you know, this big jarring like, the gold sequins and all the other crazy things I'll usually add to cards. I wanted it to be a little more subtle with 
that bling because I've got, you know, the watercolor ba background and the, um, the splatter from the Perfect Pearls as well as like the gold glitter paper from the Outline Mom. But again, this is coming from the person who's like, more is more. <laughs> so this is about as subtle as I go. <laughs> so anywho, I adhered those into place with the Craft Tacky Glue and my little embellishment wand. And that's going to finish off this card. So this video is actually part of a blog hop. I will have all the info in my blog post. So you can check that out. It'll be linked directly below the video in the description box. And I'll also have a supply list, links to everything I use. You can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate your support and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.